Before we start this video, make sure to watch our previous Super Doomspire videos in the series. These include the Combat Guide, the Advanced Guide, the Beginner's Guide, and many, many more. I'll link a playlist in the description so you can catch up, although it is perfectly fine to watch this video on its own. I'd appreciate it because of the insane amount on my Super Doomspire stuff, and I really enjoy making these videos. If you'd like me to cover another Super Doomspire topic, please let me know. I'm happy to taste suggestions from fans. It'll also help you learn a bit. Hopefully, I can make more of these videos, and a new update comes out soon. Thanks everyone! Now let's move on to the prior topic of our video. Super Doom Spire is a game with many weapons, mechanics, tools, and more. It can be complicated to learn at times especially, considering it is much different than the original Super Doom Spire and has different physics, game modes, weapon catalogs, in fact there's a lot to cover. For a new player, Super Doom Spire can look like quite a hard game to play, or may feel intimidating simply because of how much content is actually in the game. Even for a long time player like myself, the game's mechanics frustrate me sometimes with too much content overload. A lot of YouTubers say the same thing, as does your mother with homework you don't get. Just practice. Yeah, that doesn't work exactly. To win any game, in fact, you need to know how to practice. But what do you practice? Practice does not make perfect. If you practice something incorrectly, how can you do it efficiently? This same practice can be applied with Super Doom Spire. Even the little things count to effectively win Super Doom Spire. In Super Doom Spire, it is best to use all these tricks that I will mention to help perfect your play. As of my experience with a year of playing the game consistently myself, by playing efficiently and learning how to correct habits, combat tools, and mistakes you shouldn't do, you'll be able to practice better and therefore play more efficiently, which then leads to great play. By correcting your mistakes, you'll learn the most effective habits, tools, and more to use which again, leads to better play and quite possibly more wins, coins, and more if you use the tips that I will mention. By knowing what to do and not to do, you'll learn habits, which can then be memorized when playing Super Doom Spire and applied to combat defensive strategies and more, all of which we will try and cover in this video. Some of the things I've already gotten to my past videos as well, but I'll be summarizing the little things that count in this video even. I will do my best to cover most of the important topics of Super Doom Spire's do's and don'ts, which can apply to all levels of players after playing the game for over 100 hours myself because I am addicted and literally have no joy in this world other than playing Tower Go Burr game. Anyways, uh, moving on. My name is Tanuki Alex and this is our Player's Guide series, Super Doom Spire Episode 5, where I'll teach you the best tips and tricks in Super Doom Spire after playing it myself. Let's get started. Yo, what's up, hashtag nerd squad, and welcome back to another video. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe for the latest Roblox drama, news, tips, and tricks, and more. Don't forget to turn on the bell so that way you never miss out on one of my videos and to become part of the hashtag nerd squad. Let's get straight to the point in this video. In today's video, we'll be organizing the video into three sections combat tips and do's and don'ts, game mode tips and do's and don'ts, and finally, any other tips I believe you should know. Let's get started with combat tips. in Super Doom Spire is a key aspect of the game and this is why I covered it first. You should make it a point to master combat as it's a, it's a key part of most players playstyle. Firstly, when playing in Super Doom Spire, play with a very loose playing style. Be sure to jump a lot with your sword which can be done by right clicking on it or also can be done by tapping the screen to avoid players hits. By playing loose you can avoid a lot of attacks. It's good to play quickly and be very attentive to your surroundings. Look around the screen for attacks if you are near. Have a focal point to focus on, but also be sure to slice your sword to avoid attacks. Practice your reflexes. I personally prefer to use all balanced weapons, but you can play in a style that recognizes to you. It's good when playing Super Doom Spire to be quick, which often helps you win games, which can be correlated to the loose playing style. In the loose playing style, it's good to slice on the sides, which can be related to the center hitbox. This distracts your opponent and makes you unpredictable. By being unpredictable, your opponent cannot detect your next move, therefore placing your side winning. Deke opponents and get away from situations using this loose playing style by especially making productivity of your sword. 
The sword is the key weapon you should rely on, although you should try and master all weapons equally as mentioned previously. The sword lunge using a normal sword, which can be included with the golden sword or the default sword, is a great way to master this loose playing style. When in combat and you need to get away, this is where the loose playing style comes in handy. You can use a normal sword to lunge or even any other sword. So say you are a heavier player, you can use a great sword to spin yourself away from the situation. To add on to the loose playing style, be sure to often use weapons like Super Ball. Practice your quick aim. This can help with medium distance players, maybe 10 to 20 studs away, to just get a quick hit. Disable them and then you can lunge yourself over to kill the player. Swords are best used for mobility. No matter what sword you have, you can use it to jump as well. When using the quick playing style, it's good to use effective weapons like the Ice Sword, which was redeemed for Code Frozen, or the Firebrand, 3000 coins I believe, to give players extra damage in this style. Now mobile players, loose playing style, it's your go. On mobile, it's better in my opinion to use less heavy weapons due to the recent screen update, which makes playing for you a bit difficult. Use lighter weapons and be sure to use the default camera mode to get the best hits in this loose playing style. On mobile, my best tricks for this playing style is to often move your camera around. I know this is harder a bit, and again, like your mother says, look both ways. Never stay in one camera angle in this game. From mobile, PC, Xbox, you might just have a blind spot and that is a huge no-no. Never have blind spots in combat. That sneaky rocket might just kill you or someone may lunge at you with a sword. As Sonic says, that's no good. No matter playing a loose playing style or a non-loose playing style, you need to constantly control your surroundings and look both ways. Continuing this point as said before, to master the loose playing style, you'll also want to bomb jump a lot, which can be done by stepping on a bomb, waiting until it's denomination time, and boom. Try and aim yourself towards the direction you want to go. For example, if you stand in front of the bomb, you'll go farther in front of the bomb. Behind the bomb, you'll go farther that way. Or if you want to go straight up, you can just simply step on the bomb. You will not get damaged. This is very useful for being quick. Rocket jumps aren't as effective, which a lot of you were recommending. But I do not recommend rocket jumps unless killing a player directly down. Rockets are probably the most useful weapon to use up close, but after equipping, be sure to very quickly switch back to your sword. This can cause another blind spot in your opponent, which can strike the rocket back at you by slicing at it. Uh oh, yeah, we don't want that happening. So let's move on to our next point. There are classic game mode two teams, spawn capture, titans, round cat rally, blow stuff up, and infection as our game modes, as we covered in full and complete detail in our advanced guide. However, most of these game modes can only be accessed by VIP and therefore will not be covered in this video. VIP game modes are covered in advanced guide, as well there is much more to come. In Infection, it is best to use heavy weapons. Infection relies on survivors and zombies. If you are a survivor, it's best to pick heavier weapons except for your super ball, because Infection works as hordes. The heavier weapons I recommend are the Golden Greatsword, I mean, it's shiny so that's pretty cool, because it's effective in dealing with it. Infection has many strategies to win, so ultimately, it's the way you choose to go. The strategy I will be summarizing this video for the survivors is the box up. It can be done with the spike trowel and the default trowel. The best maps for this is Dark Jungle and Storm Hell because these maps do have an entry to the tower at the top of it. Do's and don'ts when boxing out. Firstly, do use three books around a door, two in the door, and one as a backup just in case people come slicing out with their swords, which can break down doors. Do not waste all your bricks or boxers to yourself out, it happens a lot on accident. Spike takes around 3 bricks as it was debuffed, it's good to place it on the path to combat zombies and it killed them in 1. Now it takes around 2 spikes to kill one. However if you get the spike trowel I believe it's best to box up the path by putting it on a diagonal angle. This isn't as effective but hey you got to make do of what you got. As a zombie it's really hard to play, with a zombie always go in a fret or brute. Remember to blitz and disperse because of the horde. Box them in, lunge out, and then lunge in. As a zombie, do not run with heavier weapons. It slows you down. Make your speed your advantage as a zombie. In both modes, it is possible to win through the power of hordes viewer. Also, take advantage of your map and study the maps just as any game mode. In Rocket Rally, when the round starts, take a normal trowel and go build yourself a nice big wall just like I build emotionally to keep my friends and family out. Then make a 3x3 wall protecting the first two kitties. They're always destroyed, but it will definitely buy you a lot of time. This gives you an advantage. 
Remember, use the scope shot or a normal rocket. Do not stay in one place. This is why so many are killed. Shoot your rocket and during the reload time, jump like crisscross. But no, not with your pants backwards, lol. This helps with avoiding stuff. That's whack. Uh -huh. Why does nobody get my 90s references? Oh, that's right. Females aren't funny. Okay, so moving on to our final game mode, Classic. Classic has two strategies. You can go from the bottom and destroy anything. No coins, though, and destroy spawns. By destroying spawns, you can stop the storms. That's why it's best to destroy spawns. In all game modes, make sure to study everything. Study maps, typical player behavior, you know. Let's move on to our final point. I hope these tips helped you in the way I did. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave me a comment down below and I'll try and answer all of them as I usually do. There's more tips coming on the way, as I know you guys really like this series along with my Super Doom Spire, so hopefully something new comes out or I gain a new idea such as defensive strategies, etc. Thank you so much for watching my video. This week I'd like to show some featured fan art by my friend Diverse Cookie. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. That's all for today's video. If you could like and subscribe, because this video took me like really six hours to edit, and I'm kind of going insane here. That would be great. Thank you. Peace out.